All right, YouTube, it is the Orchid Prince here again. Let me see if I can fix this just a little bit. So today I wanted to do something because I just recently got some more of these. Now, what these are, they are uh, just little containers that people use um, in the restaurant world. And so I was able to pick these up for $2 for 50 of them. And um, these are small. I have some large ones. These are eight ounce. I have, I think these are eight ounce. These are 16 ounce. I have some 32 ounce ones as well. But um, I'm doing a little catacetum update and since they're little plugs, I've decided to go ahead and get some small ones of these. Now, what I will be doing, but I have to do it outside and I don't wanna film outside because it's like 120 degrees outside. It's ridiculous. But um, I went to one of our local uh, thrift shops and while I was looking around, I was able to find a little soldering gun. It was only $3. I got it out of the closet. Um, yeah, it's, it's the gay thrift shop, but I love it anyway. Uh, but what I'll do with this is I'll actually create little holes in these so that it can breathe and I will keep a small tray at the bottom so it can collect water because catacetin type orchids, uh, when they are in active growth, they need a lot, a lot, a lot of water, which is weird because in dormancy, they need no water at all. But um, that's what I will be doing. I will not be, you know what, if I get the, I might do a video just on that. But um, I wanted to show y'all, as I said, I was gonna do some experiments with ca uh, catacetin type orchids. And because I received them the way I received them, um, and how many I received at one time, I just had to throw them all into some seed starters and hope for the best. But because now I have a little bit of extra time on my hands and my partner might be walking in through the door any minute now, but I wanted to go ahead and um, do a quick little video. So what I will be doing, and this is the one that I'll show you, um, I've taken them, I've gotten some packing peanuts from the Growing Grunt, which I'm very thankful for, but I put packing peanuts at the very bottom. Now that is just to, you know, give some sustainability. Um, it keeps, I don't know. You know what, some people say it keeps the roots from drying up, blah, 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 but I think it actually just saves me on a little bit of media. So um, I'll have those at the bottom. That's where the water will be. Now the cool thing is, is that these will not decompose, so um, it shouldn't spike the acidity level in it. So, not only do I have, um, okay, so the first one that I will be showing you is actually going to be with sphagnum moss. Now, according to Fred Clark, sphagnum moss is the way to grow these. But as I said, I was gonna do some experiments with some different growing medias. So I have already formulated one. It does not have the holes in it, but this is um, just fir bark and with some osmocote in it. Um, as you can see, I've already got the packing peanuts and everything, so I'll be planting some in these. I decided to try lava rock. Now this is big, bulky lava rock. It is ones that you use in garden. Now I've already soaked these in hydrogen peroxide to make sure that they're clean. Um, you can also, with these, uh, if you don't like the big bulky ones, you can take a hammer and smash them up into small pieces. I'm gonna keep them big just because I don't really have the time. I'm probably going to do another one by breaking them up because I do have so many that I have to plant up. So I've got sphagnum moss, fir bark, I've got lava rock, and then I've got grow stones. So um, if you remember my last video, uh, the growing grunt recently sent me some grow stones. Now what these are um, is actually repurposed glass. So it's not natural as I thought it was. It is not strip mined, so it is good for the environment. It is recycling glass into something new. And then you can use it to scrape off all your bunions and everything. It's actually really porous, really good. Um, and I might actually try, you know what? I've got some perlite outside, so I'm probably gonna do another one in straight perlite. Now, the only difference is, is because they are already in active growth, I'm not gonna cut out the plugs from them, which I've heard from a lot of people to go ahead and do that. I should have done it before the roots started growing. I just didn't have the time. So, um, what I have done is I've actually gotten, let's move back. So, why don't we actually start with the grow stone? I've actually got my first set of catacetin type orchids right here. Now this is 6138, 6138, 6138. 
believe that's all of them. Now the reason I'm doing this is because, okay, so this is um, Mornara Painted Desert SVO HCC AOS mixed with Catacetum uh, Barbatum. Now if you know what the Catacetum Barbatum is, it looks really cool. So I can't wait to see this one. Um, so, and these have both received awards, so yeah, they look good. So what I'm gonna do, I have 20 of these. So I'm going to take a few of them. Now in this seed starter, I've actually got two uh, to three of them in each. So I'm going to start, why don't we start with what the growing grunt gave me. So I will take this out. Here we go. And then I'm gonna use the clippers that the growing grunt gave me. Um, and I will dust these with um, some cinnamon in just a little bit, but there are some little spots on this that I'm just gonna cut off just because I don't like the way it looks. Okay, so there's two in this one. I'm actually going to take them out. Let's put that in there just so I know what it is. did just do the floor. So I'm gonna take this out right now. Now the reason I'm doing this right now is because they have not grown too terribly much. So I'm not affecting the roots at this time. So if you look, they're still in their plugs. They're still in active growth. This one doesn't have that many. I can actually, no, because this one does have some roots going down. So what I will do is I will actually take it, take the growth and put it towards the inside. And then take the growth and put it towards the inside. Now I should, because I have 50 of them, I should be able to fit all of them because this pack that I just got actually a 50. So I'm going to take it, make sure that it's establishing itself. Not really establishing itself. I'm just making sure that it's not going to fall over. And then there we go. So what I will do is I will take some more Osmocote and put it down. I've got a lot in the bottom, but Osmocote likes to kind of sit. I'm gonna sprinkle some on top because they love to eat. Just make sure that it's evenly distributed. All right, so I've got some sphagnum moss here. I'm probably going to use this one because it's all the same boat. Probably going to use this one and the sphagnum moss one. Okay, this one has three in it. So I will take this, put some sphagnum moss down. Now I'm doing this because the roots will grow crazy and I just wanted them in something different than a starter. I wanna be able to see the roots as they grow. Now I'm probably not going to get all of these to survive, but at least this way I can see how they're growing and this gives me a chance to inspect and see if there's any fungus or anything that I don't see because um, as you can tell, I can't see through these. So. I didn't think this one was gonna survive because it doesn't have a plug, but it's gonna do very well. It's already got some roots coming out, so. Now I'm just going to take some more sphagnum moss, poke it around. Now, as I said, later on, I'm going to take um, this little thingy and burn holes in it. 
Um, make sure not to hit the roots or anything. And then I'm going to make a hole and I'm going to be able to hang these because I wanted some hanging in my new place, which I move into in about 20 days, meaning I should probably pack more. If you look at all the boxes around me, I've already started packing. My partner hasn't really. I started packing like last month and I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for it. Okay, so we've got the grow stones and we've got the sphagnum moss done. Now I will be posting updates on these as well. Let's go ahead and get the fur bark done. The reason I'm doing this is because um, these are all the same. I have 20 of them. So I figured might as well do the same one in all these different types of media. I'm not gonna lie, I'm going to be potting a lot of these other ones in sphagnum moss. Why? Because that's what Fred Clark said to do. And now I've got a whole bunch of little extra pots. It's gonna be good. Okay. Never pull from a new growth. Never, ever, ever pull from a new growth. I'm gonna have to get some more of that fur bark. So if you look, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm just gonna show you real quick, is because the roots are not that far along. So they're at the perfect stage where they will actually grow down and then establish themselves. If the roots were further along, I would not be repotting because I don't want to damage any of the new roots. Let me just get this in there a little bit better. Alrighty. Just keeping that root clear. All right, and I'll go back in with a little bit more fur bark in a little bit. And I'll be doing a mixture. So there are three in here. I'll be doing some mixtures of fur bark, uh, perlite, all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to. I said I was going to do a bunch of different ones. So I decided to go ahead and just do a bunch of different ones. I do not know how this lava rock's gonna do. That's why I'm doing it with this kind because I've got so many of them. And they are doing so well. That I feel like they can take on the world. This one's growing a little weird, but it's growing. Do I have any? I'll leave a little bit of Spanish moss in that one just because I don't want it to be ruined. All right, so I will be doing a perlite one, but as you can see, I've already got my testers that I will be doing updates on. This is the sphagnum moss. Probably gonna add one more to this one. 
This one is the Grow Stones. Actually, you know what? Now, oh, one thing I wanted to share with y'all. So I've got some that are just doing some funky stuff. So this is um, one plug that has two gross on it. I actually have one up on the table that has five new growths on it. Crazy. So let's just put this one in here. Just make a little hole. Me, me, me. Now, when there is new growth, this is the perfect time to actually repot uh, catasetni type orchids. Uh, if you're going to mount them, this is the perfect time to mount them. Do I recommend mounting? No, I don't. But, um, if some of them are not very well along when it comes to the roots, I will tell you this. I've got some trees at my new house that I will be putting some of these in just because I have so many of them and I want to see how they do. So uh, maybe I'll do a video on that. Uh, what got me really thinking about that is I went to Home Depot the other day and in front there was a tree that someone had just put a little cat lay in. No media whatsoever just kind of shoved it in there. Now, the plant did not look that pretty. It was not gonna win a beauty contest, but boy, did it establish itself. It had roots going everywhere, and I hadn't seen it before, so I was like, huh, is it wild? No, it's a cat Leia that was probably dying, and uh, one, of the, one of the people working there was probably like, hey, let's just throw it in, in a tree. So if you've got a chance to do something different, especially if it's a plant that's not doing that well. I mean, what else do you have to lose? So I've got plenty of these little things left. So that will be good for another shipment uh, if I get another shipment. So I've got my grow stones, fir bark, and then this one is really heavy. And I don't know how good it's going to do. I will do my best. This is the lava rock. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but this has been the Orchid Prince, and I'm out.